but the continual trend of high pricing is far from over. But personally, I will never buy an AMD card again. And I'm already at the point where I'm probably not buying an Nvidia card ever again. So why are we still getting excited about 1080p graphics cards in 2021? Especially when they cost, what, almost $400? You guys are sick of this shit and so am I, trust me. The combination of AMD's Zen-based processors and Vega GPUs into a single chip has been a revelation in certain parts of the computing world. Micro form factor desktops, slimline laptops and gaming handhelds have all taken advantage of AMD's signature party piece to help reduce size and power requirements without sacrificing performance. To a gaming PC enthusiast, however, they've been mostly an interesting curiosity, but still no substitute for even a basic GPU. That was, of course, until the scalper pandemic. When the news on the graphics card front just seems to get worse and worse, you'd be forgiven for just giving up on the idea, sourcing yourself a reasonably cheap Ryzen 3 4350G and waiting for the whole thing to blow over. I bought my CPU from AliExpress in late 2020 for £90. Alas, they've doubled in price since then, and the 6-core 4650G actually looks like a better buy today. Still, if you're lucky and can find one used locally, or manage to find one in a pre-built PC, it might still be worth knowing if it can game in 2021. The PC used to test the older 3400GE last month, has since been sold, so to test this Zen 2 based APU, I've turned instead to my humble RPG PC. If you're new to my videos, I built a £300 PC in late 2020 that has been my test bed for graphics cards so far this year, and since then it's had a couple of upgrades. I've recently swapped out the old ASUS A320 motherboard for an MSI B450 at a cost of about £35 from Amazon Warehouse. Although this board isn't exactly for overclocking enthusiasts, it should allow me to test the CPU and integrated graphics with a modest overclock. The 16GB of Corsair LPX DDR4 3000 RAM is running slightly overclocked to 3200, which is sadly as high as this stuff will go. Starting with Doom Eternal, and I went a bit more in-depth this time round. At 1080, averages languish at 35 FPS. Overclocking the CPU to 4.2 GHz and the GPU to 2.2 GHz sees averages step up to about 40. At 1600 by 900, that climbs to 46 stock and 52 overclocked, and 720 gives over 60 FPS without an overclock and over 70 FPS with it. Fortnite at 1080 Pro settings averages over 60 FPS even without overclocking, but if you have the option to OC you can squeeze a couple more frames from it and minimums appear to be dramatically improved. At stock clocks the 4350G can only deliver 45 FPS in Warzone at 1280x720. Overclocking pushes that average up to 52, still a bit slower than the older 3400G, and minimums are pretty painful in all cases. Genshin Impact is a big disappointment compared to the 3400G. Stock speeds at 1080 medium score 37 FPS, and overclocks only lift that figure to 41, a long way from the 50 and 53 FPS of the older CPU. Scores from the Forza Horizon 4 canned benchmark are very close to those from the 3400G here. The 4350G manages 42 FPS at 1080 medium with stock clocks, and 47 FPS overclocked. Slightly disappointingly, Cyberpunk 2077 at 720 lowest settings only manages 28 FPS stock and 31 FPS overclocked. The 3400G is about 15% faster here. Horizon Zero Dawn is likewise only borderline playable at 720 original settings, but its stock average of 27 FPS and overclocked 31 FPS is actually pretty similar to the 3400G's results. 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla scores look much more playable, averaging 36 FPS at stock speeds and climbing to 41 FPS with overclocking. Finally, some good news. Apex Legends performs about 15% better on the 4350G than on the 3400G. Like the other processor, however, we're not really seeing a benefit from overclocking. Enlisted, alas, doesn't match the 3400G here. The 4350G at 1080 medium only manages 31 FPS at default settings and 37 FPS overclocked. Watch Dogs Legion does even worse. Its stop clock performance at 1080 low is 21 and overclocking only brings that up to 23. You should probably consider dropping resolution to 720 in this one. It's kind of unfair to compare the 4350G's results in Resident Evil Village to those in my last video, as the recent patch that fixed the DRM related performance bug has made a massive difference. 1080 performance manages 35 FPS at default clock speeds, lifting to 38 with an overclock. More importantly, the minimums are much higher. Sub 30 FPS frame rates in this game result in actual slowdown, so either overclocking the GPU or dropping settings further are strongly advised. Ending on a high note then is Rocket League. This actually scores slightly higher on the 4350G than it did on the previous gen quad core APU. Without overclocking, I saw an average of 69 lifting to 76 after the overclock. It looks then like the overclocking potential on the 4350G is perhaps slightly higher than that of the 3400G, even if overall performance isn't quite as good. In last month's video, I surmised that my overclocked results might have been held back by the RAM, so this time around, I decided to test that hypothesis. After some hunting around, I managed to find a good deal on a previously unknown brand 16 gig kit of DDR4 4000 and ran my tests again. The RAM upgrade shows a small but noticeable benefit in Doom Eternal, giving about an extra 7% average performance over the 3200 speed RAM. Fortnite sees essentially 10% better performance, going from 66 FPS with the slower RAM to 72.6 FPS with the DDR4 4000. Warzone finally manages to eclipse the 3400G when using faster RAM in conjunction with the overclock. A fact that only remains true for as long as you remember that I never tested the 3400G with fast RAM. Genshin Impact sees only about a 5% uplift in averages over the slower RAM, up to 43 FPS from 41. It's an improvement, but not a particularly earth-shattering one. Forza Horizon 4 gains about 10% from the RAM upgrade, pushing it up over 50 FPS on average. For context, this is almost exactly the same performance as an R9 280 from Integrated Graphics. DDR4 4000 suits Cyberpunk quite nicely, improving averages by a further 10% and pushing it just ahead of the R9 270. However, I can't help but notice it's still a bit slower than the 3400G here. With the RAM upgrade, you could actually lock Horizon Zero Dawn at 30 FPS in Reva Tuner and rarely see a dip. Averages are up to 33 and 1% lows at 29. AC Valhalla hits 44 FPS, a small margin below the 3400G, but still about 20% up from the stock configuration of the 4350G. Apex Legends may not have benefited much from the core overclock, but the RAM upgrade has a big impact, giving about 20% more performance than stock. On the flip side, Enlisted doesn't even benefit a single frame on average and only gains 1.5 FPS at minimum. Upgrading the RAM gives us another 2 FPS in Watch Dogs Legion, though it still doesn't match the 3400G and I still think you'd need to drop to 720 to play this. Village gains another 10% from the RAM upgrade. I think I'm going to look a little more in depth at the game running on the 4350G in a separate video where I'll compare FSR and interlaced rendering performance. Keep an eye out for that video in the next week or so.
Finally, Rocket League's performance increase isn't quite as dramatic this time, but it still gains an extra 5 FPS over the slower RAM. As I mentioned before, the DDR4 4000 kit wasn't from a known brand, nor was it particularly expensive. In fact, it cost just £75, which is about normal for a kit of 3200 As you might expect, its timings weren't spectacular. The XMP was configured to 19, 24, 24, 44, and that's what I used to benchmark the results so far. But after Hardware Canucks video on the new 5600G, I decided to see whether adjusting timings on my RAM had the same kind of impact as theirs did. Alas, cheap RAM is cheap for a reason, and after a fair amount of swearing and pulling out the CMOS battery, I finally got the PC to run stably with timings of 17, 22, 22, 42. However, by this point, I'd pretty much given up on benchmarking and I wasn't going to test everything all over again. So I just ran Time Spy and a handful of games, mostly those with built in benchmarks. After tightening up the latency, Time Spy's CPU score increased by 0.87%, and the GPU score by 0.31%, for an overall score improvement of 0.34%. Forza Horizon 4 gains 0.2 FPS on average, though minimums jump by an entire frame. On the flip side, AC Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion gain nothing on average, and actually lose a frame each on their minimums. To complete the picture, Warzone gained just under 1 FPS on average, and 0.1 FPS 1% lows. So glad I spent all that time and energy f***ing about in the BIOS. A quick look at PC part picker seems to show that DDR4 4000 costs about £20 more than a 3200 kit of the same capacity. In exchange, you'll get on average close to 10% extra performance in gaming. Now, you can't buy a significantly better used GPU upgrade for £20 right now, and the integrated Vega 6 graphics can outperform most cards available brand new for under £80, so a budget kit of high frequency RAM seems like a good investment. On the other hand, stepping up to CL17 RAM of the same capacity adds a whopping £60 more, and realistically isn't going to move the performance needle more than a point or two. If you really were thinking of spending £60 over the odds on low latency DDR4 4000 RAM to pair with a 4350G or any other APU, I'd suggest you're better off putting that cash towards an RX 460 or GTX 950. And while you're at it, spend the £180 or so that this CPU will cost you these days on a Ryzen 5 3600 or i5 10600K instead. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.